High five! <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of SEO Fairy Tales. With me today is Jason Stevens. You're doing SEO at Google. You like hot sauce and you used to be an actor and also in musicals as well, right? That's right. Wow. That Okay. But we're not talking about musicals. Um, you're doing SEO at Google. So you brought me an interesting story of something not exactly going as the product team planned. What happened there? Well, um, I do SEO at Google, as you mentioned, and um, we work with lots of different product sites within Google. Because of the separation between search and SEO, they often come to us. We had an interesting case who came to us and wanted an audit, which mm -hmm. is something we do for lots of sites. But we noticed that in the audit that they were getting some bad snippets in the form of no information available for the site for a lot of their ranked queries. Ooh. And they didn't know that. You found that out. We found that out, yeah, oh. that's right. And um, in doing some investigation, as you always would, we, we did. Uh, and, and the problem with the bad snippets like this is it confuses users. Yes. They don't necessarily know why they're seeing them. They may not want to click on them. And uh, it impacts the traffic to the site. I mean, it looks shady. It lo so, doesn't look good, yeah. Uh, So how did that happen? How did they end up with uh, like a snippet looking like that? Well, we had some different hypotheses, but we wanted to start with the data and the right. tooling that we could use. So we, we uh, looked in Search Console to see mm -hmm. what we could see, in normal kinds of checks that we would do. And we noticed that the crawl request had dropped to zero over the last month. And that typically means that there is a problem with crawling the site in general, site-wide. Yeah. One place that I usually start uh, is thinking about the robots.txt file, which is a place where you can have this type of control over mm -hmm. site-wide crawling. Yeah. So we went to uh, look at their robots file and noticed that they had a disallowed directive across the entire site. So the entire site was not allowed to be crawled. And this had happened over the, I think the change had happened a month ago. Oh. So that was a, the red flag right there. Yeah. Why did they add a disallow? Did like could you trace it to why that was done? Because it might have been intentional. It could have though. been intentional. Yeah, we don't. We didn't really understand why the change was made. Mm. Uh, but the, their previous file was really. It's it wasn't fine. blank, but it was pretty boilerplate. There wasn't any directives there at all. Ah, so, okay. Yeah. So we decided to. Um, we that was our our primary. Uh, Hypothesis mm -hmm. and in history and historic, you know what we've seen in experience. This is typically why you get a snippet like this. It's true, yeah. If problem. we can't fetch the site, then obviously we don't know what's on the site, so we can't generate a snippet. That that's correct. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. But it was side wide, so that that is unfortunate. So how did you how did you figure out um, what was the intention of it? I, I mean, you said like you don't know when that or you went, knew when it was in. Um, inserted, but did anyone tell you like you can't remove that or was it like as easy as just removing it? It was just as easy as removing it. And they really started working with us because they noticed that they were having traffic declines. Yeah. And um, so um, our team went, went ahead and made recommendations mm. for changing that file, mm -hmm. which is a fairly simple change. If you can yeah. edit your robots file, it's a pretty simple yeah. change. I mean that the thing is like it's it's simple enough if you actually, as you say, have control over it. Yeah. But with some platforms or tools, it might not be as easy, especially if it's like generated from some sort of plugin or something. Exactly, you might not necessarily have control over it. Exactly. Ha! Huh. Interesting. And you you said they didn't notice this issue. They just came to you with the request for an audit. Right. Interesting. Right. But they did have Search Console, or did you have to set it up for them? They did have Search Console. Interesting, but why did they not notice this problem then? Was there just no one there to look at it? Often or? we'll work with teams who have set up Search Console because of a best practice, but may have not had the bandwidth to be able to go and check right. the results. Right, got it. So we'll work with them, and that's part of our process is to go through right. and configure and, and take a look at the, what we see. That's interesting that you say like they set it up because it's part of the best practices, but then they don't have the bandwidth. So if I were part of a development team that was really like 
strap for resources, what would you recommend me as a developer to look for when I do that? I don't have as much bandwidth as an SEO has. I don't have the experience. Where do you need me to look in a Search Console interface and the Search Console reports to identify if things are a OK or not great? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think um, Search Console does a good job of bubbling up where it sees big problems. Mm -hmm. uh, usually right when you land in Search Console, there in, and over the evolution of Search Console, you'll see kind of warnings and alerts, you'll get yep. that through email. Um, within this specific case, there's a crawling section of Search Console that can give you access to like how Google is crawling the site. And it was pretty obvious at the time. And it's obvious, and then when you have a, dro a, a drop in traffic, that can obviously mean it's time to do something. Fair enough, that, that makes sense. Uh, did they notice the drop in traffic elsewhere as well? Or is, was it just like in Search Console? Was there any way to notice the drop in traffic for them? Uh, they you, they didn't mention anything about any web analytics that they had, any GA. OK, right. But if you were to have analytics, that would also help. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. So you're saying, um, I need to make sure that my site actually gets crawled, yeah. which makes sense. Yeah. Once I have established that it has been crawled, what are other things that could potentially impact my site and search that I want to look for if I don't have the capacity to do like a full audit? What are the, the main pitfalls that you see our product teams fall into? So um, obviously, there's there's different components of the SEO process that mm -hmm. you would want to do very at a very high level. Um, if you can set up analytics, you can understand what's happening from your traffic from yeah. search. That's one to see, hey, are we seeing the pages on the site? Are they getting any kind of traffic from search? What are we expecting from that? Um, if we see that none of the content on the site's getting any, any traffic. There's there's probably basic reasons for mm -hmm. that. Has the site been indexed? Search Console mm -hmm. can help you understand that. But also, uh, is Google crawling the right parts of the site? Mm. Is it understanding what's fresh, what's new? Mm -hmm. Is it getting lost in when it's crawling? Often that can happen uh, as yeah. well. Um, so you can use different methods to be able to kind of direct the search, direct Google to the right place in the site. That's nice. That's interesting. So you're saying like Search Console basically has all the tooling that I as a developer would need to identify if there's any trouble coming my way and if my website is performing the way that I would expect it. So you said like the performance report is really useful for seeing if the right sites are actually getting traffic or the right pages get yeah. actually get the traffic. And uh, the crawling report helps me figure out what's happening in the crawling. Exactly. That's for you. And we also use other types of tools to understand like Core Web, Core Web Vitals for type yeah. of performance. Um, there's there's like mobile friendliness tools. There's tools right. that are baked into Search mm -hmm. Console and then some that you may use externally. True, to, true. All part of the suite of tools that we true. use. True. So rich results test is one if you have Absolutely. rich results and structured yeah. data. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. Interesting. That nice. So, is there any other tooling that you would recommend people to look at if they are strapped for resources to fi figure out if things are going fine or not, or is it just Search Console? Um, I would use those other tools as well. So, I mean, uh, you have Lighthouse, for instance. You can use right. Yeah, Lighthouse. Both externally and built into Chrome, yeah. uh, we use those tools quite a bit. Yeah. Um, of course, GA. If you have Google Analytics, that's a great tool to understand True. your total traffic mix and mm -hmm. what's happening on the site. Understand what's happening at the pages when they land on the pages. Mm -hmm. Do they have the best experience? Are they matching their intent of when they're, what they expect on that page? True, yeah. That combination of tooling helps us understand the full complexity of the picture of what's happening. It's really cool that you mentioned this like mix of tools because I know that. So I have been contributing to uh, the Lighthouse SEO audits. They are very superficial, but still they give you pointers and indications. And they are right where your developers are to begin with, yep. because most developers look at some point in the life cycle of a project, look at Lighthouse scores. Core Web Vitals is a big thing. Uh, and we, we just had an episode where um, the issue was identified through Google Analytics and then was traced to basically, well, not really Core Web Vitals, but loading time. So it's also a performance metric and then uh, basically measured through Lighthouse. So it's interesting to see like this mix of tools that keeps repeating throughout different uh, people in the industry um, looking for, for what's happening on this. Exactly. So that's, that's fun. That's exactly. interesting. Cool. Yeah. Wow. All right. So did the fix with the robots.txt then solve the issue? It did. <sighs> it did solve the issue. 
And it was a pretty simple fix, right? Um, in, in the robots file, there's a disallow directive usually for disallow all, yeah. it's a forward slash. We just removed it. it. Just removed yeah, that. yeah. And uh, <laughs> within a, you know, a period of time, we started seeing the crawl report, yeah. the requests start going up. We started seeing yeah. the, um, the traffic start returning, the snippets start returning the way we wanted oh, them to. That's good. So it was a pretty easy fix, and as you say, if you have the ability to, to make that change, it's easy. But sometimes, yeah, it's, you know, sometimes it's not an easy exactly. fix. That's interesting. And looking at, at how your report, how your audit showed that and helped them to actually overcome this challenge or, or identify and overcome this challenge. Did they do follow-up work with you as well? Or, or did they like try to learn how to prevent these things in the future? Yeah, we we in, we have like in, quote unquote engagements with mm -hmm. these teams. So we do uh, technical content, yeah. all types of, of work oh, with nice. them. We do that for a lot of product teams within Google. Cool. Um, as far as preventing, it's a really important point. Um, what we try to do is put in monitoring for really important right. parts of, from see. an SEO perspective. <laughs> and there's pretty easy monitoring you can put in for a robots file to see if something has changed. You can use a crawler. I won't say which crawlers are out there, but there's different crawlers you can use. A bunch of them were mentioned in previous episodes. Oh, okay. So like we have a good selection of tools out there. Uh, yes, yes, there are lots of, and that's just one. There's lots of other types of tooling you can do to yeah. understand if a page has changed, which is really useful Ooh. for SEO, right? Yeah. Lots of people have hands on a website. Yeah. You may not be know everything that's happening. It's very useful to know if something has changed and that way you yeah. can prevent potentially long-term effects. Yeah, and especially like the change detection is a tricky one because usually when a client comes to you and says like, this has this is broken, and you say like, so what did you change? And they say, nothing. Right. They right. never changed anything. It was like that when I found it. I, exactly. I didn't touch it. And then if you have a tool like that, you can be like, well, actually, yeah. this yeah. has changed last week. Why? And then the interesting investigation goes on as to why it has changed. Exactly. Yeah, a good one. Yeah. Interesting. So would you say like a robots.txt issue is one of the things that a lot of companies fall into, like a, a problem that they, they have experienced? I think so, because just for that very reason, a lot of times either they may have not had one configured mm. at all, or um, a product development team may have thought they put the best effort robots.txt yeah. file out there and had no one really review it. And that can have super detrimental effects yeah, on, on the site itself. So it is pretty common, and there, it can be tricky. Uh, yeah. You can configure it if you want to block crawling for certain parts of the site, yeah. and that's often a useful tactic. To exactly. Do. Yeah. If you if you have like these very tricky filter pages that you exactly. actually don't care for, or like a bunch of content that is important for your customers but not really important for people searching for your your brand, then you want to disallow that from crawling. That exactly. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Uh, interesting. Robots.txt is such a fascinating but also slightly frightening thing because mm -hmm. it is a very powerful tool. But as such, with great power comes great responsibility. Exactly. And uh, that's an interesting one. But would you say it's it's usually a good idea to just not touch your robots.txt if you know it works? Or would you like what would you do if I have to change something? If I come to you and say, we have these bunch of pages here uh, that we want excluded from search, what's the best way to do a change in robots.txt without potentially breaking it? I would use the robots.txt testing tool, which right. allows you to test out how something would be excluded mm -hmm. or included before you make that change live. Ah. It's often a very useful All right, tool. so I can try things out before it potentially breaks yeah, exactly. my website's experience and search. OK, that's that's pretty nice. Because there's lots of different types of uh, regular expressions you can yeah. use. It can get really tricky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and if you do a slight mistake, the computer is going to do what you told it, not what you wanted to tell it. So that's, that's, uh, right. that's yeah. an interesting one. Yeah, yeah that's nice. So we have like a, a set of tools there um, that you you went through, and uh, we, I think we both agree that robots.txt is a fantastic tool at what it does, but it needs to be treated with care. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just always interesting to me to see how people are like debugging these kind of kind of things when they appear or like even spot them. I mean, you were the ones who spotted it, yeah. right? The, yeah. the product team wasn't even aware that this was going on. And you mentioned monitoring, and it's interesting because monitoring didn't come up so far. Mm. And that's why I want to know from you, 
are you using monitoring? And if so, what are you using to do the monitoring? I know there's a bunch of different tools, but how do you monitor your website? What tools are you using? What services are you using? How do you configure them? What do you specifically look for? We heard robots.txt and changes on the website. Maybe you have other setups out there. Um, let us know in the comments below. That would be very interesting. So for now, I'd like to say thank you so, so much, Jason, for being on the show. Of course, glad to be here. And I hope that you all enjoyed it as much as I did. And um, yeah, stay safe, take care, and bye-bye. Boop. <laughs> okay. <laughs>